Hello there. Before we get started on today's episode, I'd like to ask a short favor. If you're interested in either of the two books that I have written and I'm about to release, head on over to my website at theanxioustruth.com slash books. There you can learn about both books, one of which is free, and you can get on my mailing list to be notified when each book is released and how you can get it. I would really appreciate that. Okay, let's get rolling. All right, we are recording. What's up, everybody? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. Back as always with Billy from Anxiety United. That is I. What's up, Bill? I'm good. How are you? I'm drinking my coffee. Drinking and coffee. I'm drinking coffee, and I believe that this is a holiday cup. I hope that's decaf. It is decaf, as a matter of fact. <laughs> it is decaf. That's good. That's good. <laughs> decaf, sugar free, non fat. Um, yes, but Starbucks has now got these look like Christmas presents. So it's a day after, you know, it's two days after Halloween. So we have to start celebrating Christmas now in the U.S., of course. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So um, today we are going to talk a little bit more about we're going to talk about our Facebook group and how everybody can start to participate more instead of just listening to us, like yes. actually getting involved and maybe using the podcast as a way to start moving forward a little bit. Right. That's the plan. So. The first thing that we should probably tell everybody is it's certainly not required. You're welcome to watch and listen all you want without joining the group. But we do have a Facebook group that's associated with the podcast now, and we will link it both in the video descriptions. So um, the fast URL, bit.ly, right, bit.ly slash anxiety 101 forum, I think. something. something like, well, we could put it on the screen or something. You can see it. It's yeah, probably. you can see it. We'll put it in the in the video description. Uh, we'll be put it on the screen, too, or something. We'll figure that out. But I would say if you're interested in getting involved in discussion where it's not all about just listing symptoms and commiserating. Commiserating is fine now and then, but it's really more about sharing successes and failures and encouraging each other and rooting each other on and propping each other up, then come on in. We would love to have you. Moving forward. Moving forward. We had our first. Um, I'm going to give a special shout out to my friend Callie in Massachusetts. Yes. Callie posted video yesterday. Uh, she found her spark from episode 18, last episode, and she decided to go out and take a walk that has been a challenging walk for her. And she posted a bunch of videos in the group and everybody got to watch it. And Callie, thank you for sharing that. And that was rock star shit right there. It's cool. Yeah, it was great. That made me That's smile watching that. About. Yep, absolutely. So I would encourage everybody, if you can, get involved if you want that encouragement. There's, it's a good group of people. It's only going to get better. So and, it's like a, a chain reaction. So it does. Callie found her spark from our video, and then I've watched that, and it's made me feel something. And then, sure. You know, that's how it works, chain I, reaction. And that's the good part about it. So. I mean, join the group just to follow along. You don't have to participate if you don't want to. But anyway, everybody's welcome. It's free. It's just a Facebook thing. So hop on in. That's where everybody is. I'm not a Facebook fan, but that's where everybody is. So it, it is what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'd say join, join the group for sure. And we wanted to talk about maybe setting goals for this month. Where It is November 2nd, 2017 when we're recording this. So Mo if, November. November. I have to start like letting the facial hair go again. <laughs> I shaved. Um, I Mine will still look the same at the end of November. Oh, ouch. <laughs> so um, if you're watching this in real time, this will be published on November, what do we say, 7th? Yeah. Yeah. So 2017, if you're watching in real time, we were talking about is maybe well, how can people maybe set a goal for this month? But even if you're not watching in real time, if you're watching this in the future, set yourself a goal for the next 30 days. Yep. So what did you do? I mean, you were talking about making a list that, you, that, that you've done in the past. Yeah, yeah. I mean, originally I made a list. So I started with something that didn't really seem that scary, but I knew that it was just like leaving the house was enough. So I just set myself sort of a, a milestone to head, head towards about a five minute walk. I think that was all it was. Okay. And then um, um, option number two, my mind went completely blank then. Option number two it happens. was to just work, walk a bit further to the local shop. And then three was like drive somewhere, get out, walk somewhere else. And I think the fifth thing was like to go to the big supermarket in the next town and just walk around that. So like when I first made the list, number five was out there. I'd never actually anticipated that I'd be able to do it. Right. But by the time I'd worked through the stuff, I did end up doing it. So... It worked for me, and hopefully it'll work for others. But it was just, I think the key was starting not too big. It was something that weren't too easy either. It was something that did actually cause anxiety. So okay, I think that was important. All right, so I would say, you know, if you're watching, you want to kind of work along this month with us, make yourself a list or 
a list of things that you want to be able to accomplish this month, whether you're in yeah, November yeah. 2017 with us or the next 30 days, whenever it is you're watching this or mm-hmm. listening, pick one thing, two things, three things that have been a challenge. And Yeah, that's it, because everybody's going to be at different stages. Yes. And we mentioned that in the group because somebody asked what will the task be, and it's it's going to be difficult to find something that nobody can do or everybody struggles with because everybody's so different. Right. So I think it's going to be more of a an independent choice, but definitely share your findings because that's the key part to yeah, yeah. helping others move forward. It's about getting that motivation and inspiration, I think. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think you can't underestimate that. I know for me, when I was really struggling, helping, reaching out to help other people was really therapeutic for me. Mm. I mean, it, it helped me, helping other people really helped me a lot. So yeah. don't underestimate sharing, sharing in a group like that where it's a supportive group of people could really go a long way because when you're providing assistance to somebody else you wind up getting a lot of it back not even directly from other people it's just the act of doing it sometimes helps yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i would 100 percent. so what i would say is when you're making your list for the next 30 days even if you just put one thing on it doesn't matter my advice on this is pick something realistic so if you've been housebound for the last year and really haven't gone further than the end of your driveway alone you know don't don't decide that by the end of the month you're going to be you know on a cruise around the world. That's, yeah, that's yeah. not realistic. So pick something small, you know, even something like a daily task, but well, sure would be great if I could go pick up my mail or something like that, you know, pick a small mm. thing and put it on the list and, and work, you know, decide that you're going to work on that this month. So, you know, you know that that's all I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> what, what, what's I'm the task like going to be? Blaze those. Um, not you. Hello. Hello. Is this thing on? What am I going to do? Is this thing on? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, that's okay. I think a lot of people will be thinking that. So let me ask you mm. a silly question. Are you feeling any sort of like anticipatory anxiety about having to do this? It's weird. Like the other day I went to the local garage, which is something that would normally cause me anxiety. Right. And I put fuel in the car, went in the garage, like walked around, bought a sandwich, bottle of drink and stuff, and then came out, took my lad to college, which is like 10, 15 mile away, yeah. and then got home. And then I started thinking about this. Okay. I knew that we were going to do something. And then I thought to myself, wait, I've just, I've just, the, the stuff that I've just done is pretty much worse than what I would think of doing for task number one. Right. So it's ridiculous. When you put it in the context of this is me challenging myself, it becomes a whole different ball game to me just going out the door, doing what needs to be done and not even thinking about it. Yeah. So it's really, it's really odd. So I don't know. I feel like I need to do something that's pretty big, but then the thought of it terrifies me. Well, but if my if if my missus said, "Can you nip me here or walk around here with me or whatever?" I'd probably do it. Yeah, if I weren't thinking about it. And you probably wouldn't give it that much thought. It, it might there might be some anxiety involved, but you would just do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's funny. But if you're planning it, and I, there was a question not too long ago. I think it might have been a YouTube or Facebook question: the planned versus unplanned exposure. Yeah, yeah, we exactly. talked about that a little bit. Sometimes yeah, the yeah. unplanned stuff is easier because you don't have time to to mm. worry about it ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. But, so I, I, I also took my missus shopping, I think it was Tuesday. And usually when I take her to the supermarket, I'm sitting in the car park feeling really edgy and just iffy. But this time I was I was out of the car, I was walking around the car park, probably looking like a madman. But just like, I just felt so much more at ease. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether, like the caffeine thing seems ridiculous and I know I keep banging on about it. It's not. But I, I have genuinely felt so different for the last few weeks since not drinking caffeine. I don't know. Wow. Like I'm not I'm not getting the bloated stomach that I usually get, like the weird nausea feelings. I'm not getting any of that. I'm not sleeping great at the moment, but I'm not feeling tired during the day. Hmm. Which is weird. I'm waking up earlier in the mornings. Yeah. I'm I'm eating less. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Caffeine is poison. <laughs> well evidently it's made a big difference for you, so don't underestimate yeah, yeah. whatever it's really- it is, it's working. Exactly, that's the thing. And yeah. like when I went to the garage the other day, I just felt complete calm. Even when I was at the, the checkout, usually when I go to the till to pay for fuel or whatever, there's a cash point outside, so I'll get the cash out. Right. So when I go to the till, I can just chuck the cash and run. Okay. But this time, I didn't even think of it. I just went in, card in, because obviously when you pay by card, you have to put it in, wait, enter your pin. There's a lot of hanging around. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. just did it. Just did it. Really? Yeah, odd. And the, I didn't start thinking about it until after I'd done it. And those are the best things, you know, when you're not thinking about it and you realize afterwards, yeah, yeah. like, oh, look what I just did. 
Mm. So we should probably address that. So you're gonna everybody's gonna make or whoever wants to play along here, you know, make a list, put a, put a couple of things, realistic things on it that you want to tackle the next thirty days. But this is a good discussion. The last couple of minutes here, when you make yeah, that yeah. list, you may actually start to feel anxiety just thinking about what you have to do now. Mm. But that's, but that's mm. you that's okay. First of all, it's completely normal. It's called anticipatory anxiety. And mm -hmm. and second of all, you you should feel that, like. I, I'm going to keep reminding people as we go through these little exercises that the goal is not to not be anxious. Like you're going to be anxious. And part of, so the exposure really and the work starts right now. So when you start to make your lists and you start to get anxious about, oh my goodness, I'm going to go wherever to the school and pick up my daughter. And you start to get anxious yeah. about that. That's, that's you're that's doing, good. you're doing the work right there. You're, you are ready doing the work when you make your list. So it's okay. Expect to feel nervous about what's coming up. Expect to dread it a little bit. Expect to be afraid of it. You're supposed to feel that way. Exactly. That's part of the disorder right now that you're going to try and overcome. So mm -hmm. it's okay. You're already working hard, dude. What am I going to do? You're sitting there working hard already. Just thinking about what you're going to do. All I can think of is freaking bowling. That's the problem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know at least one person is going to laugh when you say that. Um, yes. So I guess the nuts and bolts of this, what we'll do is, you know, post your list in the group if you want to, or just keep it private. It doesn't matter. And I'm sure people will chime in and, and discuss it with you and offer suggestions and, and cheerleading and that sort of stuff. And then as you go about working on it, if, you know, whether you just want to report back and, and tell us what happened or you want to take video and post it like Callie did yesterday, uh, you know, there's, there's no rules. It's just however way you feel like sharing and participating. Is good. Yeah, 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 I yeah. Agree. yeah. And I think we're we're up to like seventy something people right now in the group, and it's it's all yeah, good people. So yeah, it's I think it's going to be solid. So that being said, should we take people through like an exposure? Let's do it. Go back into the memory banks. I'll I'll think about maybe one of my old ones, and we could go kind of through one of your old ones. And yeah, yeah. What did it actually feel like? So, yeah, it didn't feel good, right? <laughs> I'm still thinking about what I'm going to do. That's the problem. Oh, that's all right. All right, so I'll, I'll get the ball rolling. Go on, you go. So let, let's Hopefully talk. Let's go through the like the nuts and bolts of what an exposure actually felt like to me. So, uh, those of you who've been following along know that for me, I had an issue getting in the car and driving around. Right, it was difficult to leave the house alone. It was really difficult to be in the, in the car, and uh, that was because I would have panic in the car, so I, I became afraid to be in the car. So, what I would literally do is first thing I had to do was decide that I was done feeling that way, and we talked about getting that spark right in the last episode and so my plan was i said okay here's what I, what I have to do here is i have to get in the car and drive all the freaking time as often as i possibly can it doesn't matter where i'm driving where if i'm going anywhere or not it's just a matter of building that back up so as soon as i had an inkling that maybe i might have to get in the car leave the house and drive somewhere no matter how far or close it was i would start to you know the, the anxiety levels would rise mm -hmm. So for me, I knew that I had to really break it down and say, okay, the object of the game here is first thing I have to do is, is get dressed. Like I have to put some clothing on to be able to go out of the house. You know, it's, it sounds ridiculous to break it down to something that small, but it's true. And I would, you know, so I would do it in the morning. So I would get up and I would, the first thing I'd have to work on is forcing myself to, to just put my feet on the floor and get out of bed. You know, now... For a variety of reasons. At the time, it was the dead of winter. We were having a very cold winter that year. So who the hell wants to get out of bed anyway? But I would literally have to force myself to get up and just go through slowly and deliberately the motions of taking something out of the closet, get, you know, slowly getting dressed, brushing my teeth slowly and deliberately. And I really had to work on, before I could get in the car and drive away, I had to work on building a routine that I was comfortable with that I did slowly and deliberately and I would watch my breathing and I wouldn't try and keep my mind clear to get to the point where I was at the front door dressed with my keys ready to go. And there were times when, you know, I would then get out the door and I would be in a panic getting in the car and I would barely make it through a few minutes. But that morning was more about working on getting to the point where I wasn't getting in the car at a level eight panic already. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't necessarily directly work on the skill of driving around. First, I worked on the skill of getting in the car without already being in a, in a major panic. Almost and preparation. The preparation. That's exactly right. Like, what should, mm -hmm. what am I thinking about right now? What I got to clear my head of this thought. I have to let that thought go. I have to let that thought go. And and it was it was work to go through and and come up with that routine. Get up, 
pick something out, get dressed, brush your teeth, comb your hair, whatever it was, throw on a hat, put on a coat, have you know, a glass of water. And I would literally get to the point where I'd get to the front door ready to go out and think, all right, how am I feeling right now? Like, and as mm-hmm. I did it every day, as often as I could, I would get to the point where it became less of a big deal. I didn't have as much anticipation. And so I would get in the car and get ready to drive. And as I would be leaving, that's when my anxiety level started to rise. So for me, it was about I really had to break it down to the smallest possible chunk to get ready to do the task. And taking away, you know, the anticipation and the fear while I was getting ready to do the task helped a lot to start to actually tackle the task. Do you you think, like, you were having the anxiety? Because a a lot of it is, or the majority of it is sensations. Mm -hmm. So would you have had the sensations while you were getting ready initially? And then the sensations would just take longer to come in? Uh, So it become like when you get in the car, that's when they now start. That's when they start. And then when you get... Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So in a way, what I was almost doing was pushing it off. Like instead of, it would be difficult to even consider the idea of walking out the door and getting in the car because I would already be in that panic state in a way. Yeah, yeah. It was very difficult to even open the door and walk out. Whereas when I got to the point where I could get dressed comfortably and and know I was going out the door and not freak out knowing I was going out the Mm. door, um, Mm. yes, it would get to the point where the rise in the the thoughts and the physical sensations would happen once I got in the car. It's weird because like we say that you shouldn't try and avoid the sensations and, and right. avoid the symptoms. Right. But what you find is because people probably think like, oh, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep feeling that. But as you just said, the more that you do it, yes. the sensations, it's not that you have to get used to them. It's that they don't actually come anymore right. when you become comfortable with doing whatever it is. I mean, at, at first, yes, I did have to get used to them. I just had to slowly yeah, yeah. and deliberately let my heart race and not care about it. Mm, mm. But after doing that, and I would say, we're not talking about months, you know, after the first few yeah. days of doing it, um, it would, the, the, the symptoms would begin to dissipate. Not because I, I had ways to make them go away, because I was just getting more comfortable with them and I didn't, wasn't giving them a lot of share of mind. You know I think I mean? that's probably something that people don't buy into is the fact that maybe they – or I know that I've thought like it, the more that you do it, you're just going to feel worse. You're going to keep doing it. And you're always right. going to feel, if you want to go out for dinner, you're always going to feel like this. But the reality is that the more that you do it, the less you'll feel like that. And I think that's what people struggle to buy into. That's true. Is know, knowing that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. You've just got to actually go through this. You've got to make yourself feel worse before you feel better. Yeah. And, and, you have to, especially in some of my very early audio only podcasts, I tried to stress that a lot. Like, yeah. you're, you're right. This is you're not resigning yourself to a lifetime of feeling horribly every time you try and go to, mm. to dinner. Um, you'll feel horribly at first, then a little less horrible, a little less horrible, a little less horrible. And the key is to just learn to not care how you feel. I know we keep saying that, and it's it's a hard thing to verbalize what that really yeah. means, but. For me, it got to the point where it's like, okay, I can, I can get up. I can, I would not be losing my shit the minute I got out of bed. It, you know, mm. I would lose my shit when I got in the car. But that's fine. Then I would literally get to the point where I said, okay, I'm not going to leave this house until I can at least be calm about the way I feel. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. So I would yeah, get yeah. to the front door those first couple of mornings. Get to the front door, and I would, I would be a mess, and I would have to tell myself like, I'm not going to just power through this. I'm just going to stand here at the front door and let myself be a mess until mm-hmm. I'm comfortable being a mess. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's how that's how that got better. And then once I was able to do that, you know, more quickly, when you get in the car without already having been through 10 minutes of terror, it, yeah, be- yeah. it became a whole lot easier to drive away and start to work on that now. So mm-hmm. whatever it is, the task that you pick to start on, break it down into the smallest possible thing. If the biggest issue, you know, we'll use Callie because she posted yesterday. The biggest issue is walking to that traffic light like she did in her video. Then, I mean, she did great, but the goal isn't to get to the light. Work on on just putting on your shoes without freaking out first. And standing at the front door, standing on the front step once you get out the door. Build it. Just build it. I think one of, one of the videos that resonates with me and that I, I'm thinking about right now is when I did the – I did a grocery store, right? And this this was probably about three years ago. Okay, it was it was World Book Day, and my daughter needed a fancy dress costume for the day after to go with a book that she was going to buy. Okay, and this this was when I was in a good place, like I was able to do 
a lot of things, but it was one. It was the supermarket that was number five on my list from years ago. Yeah, okay. So it was that, that exact same place, and it was me, my dad, and my daughter, and we just decided one evening, or it was the evening she needed the fancy dress costume for the next day. So I said, let's just go. I didn't really think too much about it because I was in a good place. Sure. But I I knew that on the way there, I was thinking to myself that it's going to kick off. I'm going to, because I already feel nervous about going here, be, just be, because of memory, I guess. Right. And then when we got in there, like we, it's a two floor supermarket, Walmart. And we got in there and I was looking around by the entrance for costumes for my daughter and like picking out just John Cena stuff. And, and she was like, I ain't wearing that. <laughs> Wonder Woman and all this kind of crap. Yeah, yeah. But she was having none of it, and then she wanted to go upstairs, and then I spent like the next five minutes just walking around the the lower aisles, not too far from the entrance, and just I could feel it, and I was like, "No, nah, I ain't going up there." Yeah. And then just with that moment, whatever it was that we talked about last week, I just yeah. went for it, went upstairs, and had a full blown panic attack up there while we were looking at the books, and just I read it out, and it was crazy and that's the one i've mentioned before when like after but it's like the calm after that panic yes. it's like 10 minutes of the most intense you feel like you're losing control you've everything the vision starts going the dizziness the jelly legs yeah. the heart rate's pounding you know that you're over breathing and it's just intense but i chose i made a decision to just stick it out stood there rid it out and once it passed, that was when I was able to just go wherever I wanted in there. Yeah. Like, I've discussed it before, but that's the video. That's the, like, the exposure thing. The one time that I've caught on film where I was brave enough to just ride it out. And then you can see the benefit of doing it. So that's where I want to get to with doing these tasks, is I want to put myself in those positions. Yeah. And and be brave enough to just hold, embrace. Yeah, which I think is it, and you're just... You know, you're not necessarily fighting and not trying to push it away. Like, oh, here comes the pain. Yeah, no. Push it away. And I think your experience is probably pretty typical. So if you're going to push yourself to a, a place where you know you're going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. You almost have to expect that you might have a panic attack. You know, it's not might. It's weird. You probably it weird. will at some point in this process. It's going to happen. Like, it was my idea to go there. Yeah. It was just like, because I was in a good place at the time and able to go for dinner and go to other shops and stuff. We just never went there because it was in a different town. Right. But it's 24 hour and this was getting on in the evening. So that was just, it was like my idea. Let's go there. Let's do Didn't this. even think twice about it until we got like within a mile of it. And then it's like, but then I didn't right. question whether to get out of the car. I just got out of the car and I just did it. I was resigned to the fact that I was going to go in there. Yeah. And maybe, yeah, I was hoping that there'd be a, perfect fancy dress costume just in the doorway sure. waiting for us sure but typically there wasn't you had to, and we go, had to go we had to go in yeah but it was good i'm glad that we did because i've got that to look back on and i still i look back on that now sometimes yeah and it's like that's the one moment where i stood firm i didn't like i weren't tense i just yeah i just carried on doing what i was doing looking at the books and just noticed that this was how I felt. There was nothing I could do if I, because in that same supermarket, I've run out of there before. And like the journey from when you make that decision, I'm going to bail. When you make that decision, wherever you are in there, the journey from there to the door is probably the worst moment in my life. That's from what I can remember of my anxiety feelings and stuff. Right. From when I've made a decision to exit, to get into the door, that is horrific. The most harrowing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I just thought to myself in that moment, like, I can either do that, end up outside, and I know that it'll switch off as soon as I get out the door, Yeah, because it always does, so I thought, why not just stand and just wait for it to switch off itself, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, and then once it did, you had full run of the store. You were Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, now you're, was, now you're invincible, was, you know? Yeah, it was like I'd gone outside, yeah. but I was still inside. It was that same feeling. Sure, sure. I know that I've actually heard... Um, uh, well, Lydia doesn't mind. Lydia, I know Lydia is listening, but she's described to me in the past um, being in those situations, and she has exited, but in a controlled way. So another another strategy is something that I know she has done, which is is also valid. She'll she'll go outside and just reset, 
So instead of going yeah. outside and leaving, like, all right, I'm done. This, I, I'm beaten by this. I can't do it. I'm out. Mm-hmm. She, she would retreat from the spot, reset, and then go back in again. Yeah, and, and you know that that's another thing to do. Sometimes that's okay too. Um, the goal is to not have to do that, but as you're working, that's perfectly okay too. If you need to step back and take that breather, and I think what winds up happening when cooler heads prevail, you get out into the parking lot, back to your car. Suddenly, it doesn't seem. Have you ever noticed that once you've done that, you have the regret of having left yeah, yeah. right yeah and then suddenly it's the like yeah. what did i run from again because now you start to feel better and like wait a minute what did i do here so yeah you know i did to- it i did it at my son's nativity once so i was sitting pretty much bang in the middle of the school hall yeah like in the rows of chairs and it was about 10 minutes in and i just had to bail out of there because i was getting all the the weird feeling where you just you know that you're sitting still but you feel like you're yep Yep. There's motion. Sure. And that it was horrible. So I bailed out of there, went outside, just stood for about five minutes, and then I made my way back in and just stood at the back. And like I watched the rest of the thing. Yeah. But that was it just that shows a bit of bravery and knowing that you're not giving up. You're not giving up that easily. Sure. And if you if you need to step back for a second and reset, that's fine. But I yeah, think yeah. the key here is understand that the goal is to feel uncomfortable in the beginning. You you have to actually intentionally be uncomfortable. So if you're going to get on this exposure therapy or the exposure journey with us and play the game along with us, not that it's a game, but you know what I mean. <laughs> the um, expect that there's going to be anxiety. There's going to be elevated anxiety. There might be panic there, you know, but all of those things are normal as you go through this. So if you're going to push yourself into the coffee shop where you have historically panicked before and it's been difficult for you to stay there, fully expect that what you have to do is go into that coffee shop and have a panic attack like that. Mm. That's normal. So if I could offer probably one overriding bit of advice is as you're going through these tasks and you're building these behaviors and you're pushing to that, that edge where the anxiety starts to come in, just constantly keep reminding yourself like feeling this way, the pounding heart and the dizzy and the jelly legs and the fear and, and, and that, that voice inside you that says, get the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to feel those things. It's normal. Like those feelings themselves are not danger. That's a normal response to a misperceived danger. There's no danger there, but your your brain thinks there is, and so your body is just doing normally what it has evolved to do. Yeah, exactly. So that feeling, the feeling jelly legs and dizzy, is as normal a feeling as just as I feel right now standing here. Like right now, I'm just mm-hmm. standing here talking to you via Skype. I don't know. I, I don't just feel normal. However way I feel right now is as normal as when I am having a swing and panic attack. Yeah, there's yeah. no, there's no difference. It's just, this is comfortable and that's not, but they're mm-hmm. both normal. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so, you know, I think, I suppose, uh, sorry, also just like for people that if people do find it too hard and you bail out, don't be too hard on yourself right. because the fact that you've even tried is a step forward, isn't it? And it next is. time, next time you try, you might get a bit more progress. So don't be too disheartened if yes. you do have to bail out of somewhere. And But it's like you said many times, get back on that horse. Get back on the horse, exactly right. And and yeah. if you're trying to get to – I'm just going to keep using the coffee shop as an example. Whatever it is for you, if you're trying to get to the coffee shop and, and just get yourself to the point where you know this is where it starts to get difficult and start working there. That's yeah, the yeah. object. Yeah, start working there. And mm-hmm. just take it in small chunks and tackle those small chunks – and if you just stay at it, I would almost guarantee that if the coffee shop, if sitting in the coffee shop and finishing your cup of tea, whatever it is, for 15 yeah. minutes, whatever your goal is, if you were to do that every day for the next week, even multiple times a day, if you have the luxury of being able to do it in your schedule, I guarantee mm-hmm. you, it would. I'm not going to say you would be sitting there falling asleep because you're so relaxed, but you, it, mm-hmm. within a few days, that task will not seem so scary anymore. And you'll yeah. you'll be able to do it. Mm. So th- this is how it works. Well, I mean, it was only like a couple of years ago that I was I just couldn't go into my local shop. Sure. Like I had a panic attack while I was at the till. Yep. Freaked out. But I didn't run out of there. I got my change and then I ran out of there. So but... I did I did what I needed to do, but I bailed. But then for like the next three four months, it it wasn't even a, an yeah. option that I was going to attempt to do it again. Right. And it took it literally took me. I, because the shop was only like a five minute walk, but I had to drive to the shop and I stood outside the shop for about 10 minutes with my lad, just waiting. I like I could, and like I'm literally as far away from my screen as I was from the shop door. Yeah. Just standing there and I was fine, but I knew that if I crossed that line, 
that was the point of no return. Yes. And I, and I literally stood there for like 10 minutes. But then I went and did it and everything was fine. I've, but it's just madness. I have had madness. that exact experience. Yes, yeah, I, yeah. I have had that exact experience. I've had that experience standing at my front door. I, when you think like one foot in that direction. Right. I, I remember very clearly this really wasn't this was one of those unplanned exposures I could go back to when you know, things were really bad for me it was snowing it was in the winter everything all the bad stuff happened in the winter for me I, swear, nice. you know, I didn't like get to do exposure when it was 80 degrees out and sunny you know fair it's November now I know winter's coming winter is coming so but I remember very clearly it was a similar situation it was a business related thing in the middle of the day but and we were having heavy snow, so I didn't. Nobody was in my office. Like it was fine. Nobody was going to get to the office because it was snowing very heavily. We didn't necessarily have to be there. The business runs remotely, even if we're not sitting in the same place. So that's fine. I'm not going to make people drive in in the snow. And something happened, and somebody had to go there, and that somebody was going to be me. I wasn't going to, you know, like I just had that thing in me that's like I'm going to freaking do this. Yeah. And I remember being dressed and standing at my front door with the inside door open, so it's just the glass door. Mm -hmm. just looking out that glass you know just on the other side of this this thin pane of glass is, is sheer terror and my heart pounding and like knowing that I had this gargantuan task in front of me get out this door get in that yeah. car drive you know well it was more than seven minutes because it was heavy snow go there do what needs to be done get home it seemed so insurmountable I probably spent an hour and a half Going back and it's forth like, to that door and just looking and looking. Yeah, and yeah. Looking the door is the door is the resignation. It is. It's like that's where you know. Yep. This is it. Yeah. Like if I go out this door, and you know, yeah. you know, logically, you know, I could go out the door and come back in the door, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's not the way it worked at the time. But these sort of feelings, when you stand, like you said, you know, eighteen inches from the shop door, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. stand with my nose pressed up against the glass in my front door, like for yeah. an hour and a half, thinking about walking outside. That is normal. That is a normal part of this process. So if you have to spend the first day or two with your nose pressed against the glass, figuratively speaking, for whatever your task mm. is, okay, that's okay. You yeah, know, that, yeah. that's, that's part of it too. So every little advancement toward the goal counts. Everyone counts. Mm. So don't, no matter how small the victory is, it's a victory. So think of it that way too. It is because like the, the going for breakfast thing that we've done a couple of times recently, that's – I try and break that down into smaller steps because it's not just going like going to sit and eat. Right. Like the the journey to get to the place is a part. Sure. And then you've got the journey from when you get out of the car to walk in the place because that can be anxiety inducing, like walking into a building. Sure. And then and then you've got the finding a seat if there's any other people there. And then you've got the sitting and actually eating and trying to be comfortable. And then right. you've got to walk out of there and then you've got to drive home. So like. Yeah. It seems like a multitude of tasks just in one thing. But re recently it's just been like I've not really thought about it until after I've done it. Right. So that's, that's nice. But yeah. I've still been feeling anxiety doing pretty much anything apart from the other day. And I think, well, when you talk about like the going to breakfast thing and you break it down to all those tasks, getting there, sitting, waiting, ordering, eating, yeah, yeah. waiting for the to pay the bill and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And then getting home at some point for me, I know and everybody's different, but for me in all of my exposures where they were planned or unplanned, there was the going uphill part, the hardest part. Yeah, yeah. And then there was the going downhill part, which was still mm -hmm. dicey because you'd still have the residual bad feelings. But yeah. it was a whole lot easier driving home than it was driving away from home. A whole lot easier. <laughs> when you go to eat, the, the I would say then the peak is probably in the moment that you've ordered. Yeah. When you're waiting for the food to arrive. Sure. That's all. Like me and my wife, we went out for lunch. It was probably 12 months ago. Yeah. But that's how often we go. I can remember the one that we did 12 months ago. But uh -huh. like I was sitting there and we probably sat there for about 20 minutes while I was just umming and ahhing. Shall we actually order? Yeah. Because you know at that point when you've ordered. Point you know of no return. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the point. And then as soon as it arrives, you can chuck it in your bag and leg it if you need to. Right, right. I'm or or maybe, and I think you're probably right, in that eating out exposure, that's probably that's the, true. That's the point. Yeah. So the downhill comes once the food, once arrives. The food arrives. Exactly. Even if you yeah. don't, you know, chuck it in a bag and, and run, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know that now you're on the downhill side of this. I'm going to eat. We're going to pay. I'm going to leave. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I get it. And and some of the, you know, that in, uh, it was undetermined thing goes away. Like, I control this now. 
You yeah, know, yeah. In the worst, and believe me, I have been there. In the worst case, like this is probably about a forty dollar bill. I can just leave sixty to be safe and run out the yeah. door. Like, you know, like if I had to, I could do this. So I, I get it. I totally get it. Um, so I, I, I would think, you know, so hopefully we've given you, if you're listening at this point or watching, some insight as to what it felt like for Billy, what it felt like for me. Mm. Just, you know, f- go back to the last episode. Listen to, you know, ha- ways to find that spark. Find your spark. Make Put something on your list for this the next 30 days. Get in the group. Discuss it with people. Get some support. And just start taking tiny steps forward, whatever it happens to be. And you know what? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're surprised. Not every step is tiny. I think when I watched Callie yesterday, and Callie, I'm sorry I keep talking about you, but when I watched her yesterday, I think she seemed surprised that, like, wow, this isn't – how come this is so easy for me today? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. sometimes you have those days we're like, mm. oh, okay, this is a lot easier than I thought it would be today. Mm. But then the next day, it maybe you feel like crap again. So that's probably another thing we should mention. I mean, I know you've had huge victories. I've seen you do. If yeah, if somebody if somebody wants to see what it's like, I did three tasks. I did the same task three days on the trot. Right. So go back and watch those videos. I'll perhaps link those in the description. Like the first day, I went and I just walked the dog around the block. Probably. 10 minute walk 15 minute walk first day absolutely fine nothing apart from a bit of anticipation at the start yeah and then like the second day i was feeling good about it but when i got halfway i made a comment on the first day that when i reached the halfway point i made a comment and said like i'm the furthest away from home now but it, did, it didn't spark anything but on the second day that i did it when i reached that same point i started feeling really really dodgy and had a panic on the way home yeah and then it set up the third day because I'd already said that I was going to do it three days on the trot regardless. Yep. So the third day, all I could think about was how bad I felt on the second. So it was perfect. Yeah. But then I went and did it on the third day and it was even easier, I think, than the first day. Yeah. But it was just crazy. Like you do the first day and like you just said, Callie felt fantastic. But then on the second day when I did it, it was horrendous. Might but the key- so good. Yeah, the key point was that I went and did it again on the third day. Yeah. I probably should have done it the fourth and fifth and sixth, but you know what I'm like. Well, I get bored. I think that's, yeah, well, then you pick something different. Boredom happens sometimes. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. sometimes it makes sense where, well, maybe you got to work on two or three things at the same time because you can get bored working mm. on one. That, that's normal. We get, human beings do get bored. I think the other thing to keep in mind as you go through this is, um, what is, oh, it's the LED on my microphone. It's this blue light. On my hand. Anyway, um, what winds up happening sometimes, it's it's never a straight line. So if you look, it's like the stock market. You know, if you look mm-hmm. at the big picture of the U.S. stock market over the last 120 years, it's one giant upward, you know, the stock market. Yeah. It just keeps going up over time. But when you focus in on a day, in a given day, uh, you know, between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., you may have lost $100. You know, but but in the big picture, it's an upward trend. And that's the way this works, too. So Mm -hmm. Monday might be awesome for you. Tuesday might not be so awesome. But just understand that that's supposed to happen also. Like, it's not a steady linear progression. Just because Monday is was great doesn't mean Tuesday is going to be even greater than that. Tuesday might be horrible. Mm -hmm. But on the big picture, you might look and say that the progress I made between Monday and Saturday is is up. I'm on an upward trend. Yeah. So that's that's where you kind of have to be. I was just look. I'm flashing for some reason. I see that. I can screen. see that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Aliens taking over. So, <laughs> should we? Do we have a couple of questions we want to answer? Were you talking about before we went on? Why am I flashing? <laughs> I don't know. I can see it though. It's like, what's going on there? Like you're in a disco. I've got my salt lamp on. Nice. Are you feeling better now? Your pink pink Himalayan salt lamp. Yeah. Man. You know what? I, I um, While you're doing that, I know we were talking about We did get one question. We both got the question. Yes, but I was going to read it out. Go ahead. Did you find it? Yes, yeah, Bob, Bob McDougalberry. Yep. If you believe you have an issue like heart problems, is it possible to imagine symptoms like chest pain? Uh, and actually, Bob asked a similar question on my channel about chest pain. Evidently, it's, it's his hardest it's his hardest, uh, you know, um, thing. Uh, his, his, I'm sorry, his hardest symptom to deal with. So, is it possible to imagine it? I don't. I'm not going to say that you're imagining. Wait for you, yeah. Wait for you to answer. Sorry. Yeah, I, I hear that. I, I get, get it wrong. I, I'm thinking this is so wrong. You get it wrong. Um, I think I, you 
you I don't can know imagine. if you imagine that you have that pain. If you feel the, you know, if you feel the pain, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think you're imagining that you're having pain. What you are imagining is why you're having, having a heart pain. problem. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So. And sooner or later, because I know that Bob had mentioned in the comment on my channel that it's like it's the bane of his existence, this chest pain thing. It's the one thing he can't seem to just yeah, yeah. get past and accept. And I think just eat like that's going to be the answer to this. Like we were talking about the article, which is a good okay. thing to talk about, too. Like sooner or later, there's no trick like. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that the key is in the question. If you. If you believe you have an issue like heart problems, is it possible to imagine symptoms? So let's, if you believe you have chest pain, is it possible to imagine you have a heart problem? That's right. how we should reframe the question. The other way, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. You're because, not, that's true. You're not imagining the chest pain. You're imagining yeah. the underlying problem. Exactly. Because you're interpreting that chest pain incorrectly. I spent a tremendous amount of time for probably the better part of a year or two. I remember sitting sitting in my office and having people in the office with me, like actually asking me several times, like, is everything okay? Because in, I wasn't even aware that I was doing it. I was constantly like, poking and prodding here right? because yeah, of yeah. the pain and the tightness. And in the end, there's, you know, I'm told, thank God I've never had a heart attack. And maybe somebody who's listening has, which would mm -hmm. be great. But, you know, I am told over and over that you, that is pain that you cannot miss when, you know, yeah, the yeah, pain that's, from that's, a heart attack yeah. is a different animal altogether. So, but I would spend all my time poking, prodding, you know, massaging and, you know, just constantly yeah, yeah. playing uh, because I was focused on it all the time. And, and honestly, what it really came down to is the pain for me was just muscular because I was constantly, my shoulders were hunched. I was, mm -hmm. I was constantly mm -hmm. in a state of tension. So after a while, yes, even the, the insertion point here where the pectorals insert at the sternum was just yeah, sore yeah. all the time because I was constantly flexed, mm -hmm. you know, so... That was a thing, and that that's, could be where that pain comes from. But after a while, it just – I used to worry that there was something wrong. But then after a while, it's like, well, like, I, I'm still walking around here. Like, nobody, yeah, yeah. nobody walks around every day for six months with chest pain because they're having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, it's never been a major issue for me. I don't know. Yeah. Weird. I could probably relate to Bob maybe more than you could on that. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I get I where I he was coming you, from. Yeah. yeah, I remember you used to talk about it. My so, thing is always passing out. That's the – or just – yeah. Collapsing. Yeah. yeah. It's, ne it's never happened. To no. Wood. Right. It's never happened. So, you know, Bob, you've never had a, you haven't had a heart attack, you know. So yeah. at some point, even just math has to become your friend. Like, I've felt this 700 times. It's never a heart attack. I thought attack. you said meth then. Meth. You'd be like, what? I, I wouldn't recommend that meth become your friend. Math. <laughs> M-A-T-H. <laughs> yeah. Here's me getting off the caffeine. Here's Drew getting off the On meth. the meth. <laughs> No wonder he's doing all right. I'm sleeping so much better now that I'm on math. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel as bloated. <laughs> uh, good. Methamphetamine jokes in the podcast. We're doing good. <laughs> so, wow. Um, I don't know, Bob. I don't think I don't know if we have given you a super answer to the question. You're not imagining. I'll, go, I'll give you an answer, and it was from Donna in the the Facebook group. She, I yep. don't know if this was posted on the same comment, but it was a response to something. And she said, health anxiety is evil, but her coach says, treat it as anxiety until you know different, and different will eventually present itself. That's true. And that's that's, that's spot a good on. point. And you know, we talked last week about Thank like, you. yeah, what's Donna. the point? Donna, that's a really good comment, and it's good advice, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So treat it as anxiety. And if it isn't, then you'll deal with it when it turns out to not be. Mm -hmm. But but not, we talked, this is exactly how we started last week's episode. Like, if you are afraid that you are having a heart attack, well, what good is sitting on your sofa? That's not stopping you from having that heart attack, is it? Yeah, yeah. You know, if you believe you have cancer, sitting on the sofa is not curing that cancer. So mm -hmm. just act as Get busy if, living. Get busy living until your body actually tells you otherwise. And yep. trust that, you know, if it's felt like this every freaking day for the last year, odds are there really is nothing wrong with you. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So you're not imagining the symptom, but you're you're interpreting it and imagining underlying causes that seem to not be there. Yes. I would say that's the answer. Um, I know I had in the group my friend Cody, who uh, – Cody's a good dude. Where's Cody's thing? Here we go. Cody is talking about um, – I've been panic attack free for three days now. That's good, Cody. It's not the goal. Remember, that's not the goal. But anyway – but I'll be honest, panic attacks don't bother me. They are over fairly quick. I know how to calm myself down. 
Very good. The problem is I have the constant lightweight anxiety symptoms that are always around. So that generalized background anxiety, right? Um, I always feel lightheaded and I have the butterfly feeling in my upper abdomen. I can absolutely relate to that. Um, those were the last symptoms got, to go away for me. I've got to just make a point. Go ahead. That Shoot. it's not constant. Ah, very good. It's probably not constant. Actually, he says, if I can read along. Uh, um, sorry. No, at some point he says, I think it was in the comments somewhere, along with some weird feeling sinus stuff and vision problems that seem to get worse if I move around too much. I can completely relate to all of those feelings because yeah. I, I dealt with them quite often. Um, and I believe that at some point Cody says, he even mentions like, uh, let's see here. I normally feel better when I get home and relax, indicator that it's not constant. He also made a point at which point, something about, <clears throat> oh, okay, okay uh, Cody. Yeah, he says, the one thing that validates that this is, th that the fact that it's just anxiety is that um, if he has a couple of beers, he feels normal. Okay. You know, and he's, and, and he's smart. He's trying not to make that a habit. He's not self-medicating with alcohol, which is, which is a thing. Yeah, it yeah. could be a thing. But – it's, choose meth. So choose meth. <laughs> I'm endorsing methamphetamine somehow. I'm like I'm the Heisenberg of anxiety. Um, that tickled me. A big Breaking oh. Bad fan here. <laughs> so the uh, I think it's not constant. You probably just answered that question, Bill. What Billy just said, it's not constant. I made I made a video, and I think the question I was asking: Am I the only person that feels like this twenty four seven? Yeah. I've mentioned it before, but then when I watched it like a couple of days later, and I felt better. I answered my own question. Yeah. It's, it never lasts. Like, it might feel like it when you're in the moment, but it does. It passes. It always passes. Right. And, so, yeah. and there are probably moments throughout the day when you suddenly mm. don't notice. And it's when you mm -hmm. get out of your own head. So for Cody, maybe he has a beer or two. And, of course, the alcohol is a CNS depressant. It's, it's sort of like taking a benzo in a way. It'll tranquilize you to a certain extent, and the symptoms go away. Because yeah. his body is physically kind of dampened a little bit. It makes sense. But there are also times for me, I know, when I would suddenly realize, like, oh, wait, I just got involved with this task. Maybe mm -hmm. I was writing code or I was whatever, listening to music or something. I would get out of my head for two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, and suddenly realize, like, holy cow, I, I don't feel dizzy. Or I, I just went yeah. through ten minutes without noticing that I was dizzy. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, the, the way to deal with that is to really notice that thing. So, Cody, answer your question. A I had a weird one the other night. It was like a couple of nights ago and I felt dizzy. Yeah. But I, it didn't actually register in my head until I'd sat back down and thought about it. And like usually when that happens, I think I was just walking from like the kitchen to the lounge to go and sit down. Right. And I just had one of those split second, I don't know, disorientated feelings. Yeah. And usually that would trigger something. Then I'd start questioning and the snowball. Yep. But it didn't. It didn't until I sat down and then thought to myself, "Holy crap! I just had one of those feelings, but I didn't actually respond to it." Right. And I'm still not now. I'm just actually recognizing that it's just happened. Sure. It's a weird. I don't know what the f is going on with me. It's positive though. That's very. That's positive. Po that's very positive. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. That's really good. So I think if you're struggling with that, and I think um, I mean, we keep talking about the Facebook group, but Christine, Christine Young, who's now in the group, yes. I, I, Christine, I love your, if you're watching this, love your videos. Christine talks a lot about generalized anxiety disorder, which is mm -hmm. that constant background anxiety yeah, yeah. that you can't seem to shake. That, that That's kind of her issue. And her approach is exactly what it should be. She's just getting out there and, you know, well, I feel this way, but I'm going to do these things anyway. Yeah, yeah. So the best advice when you have like, okay, you might not be afraid of panic, but you still have those nagging symptoms that stay with you. You have to treat it the same way that you did the panic and just don't sit on the sofa because you're dizzy. Get out and do what you want to do anyway. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, believe me, even as even these days it can happen. I could think of a time – I'll give you an example. It's probably six or eight months ago. I, I, what was, I was working like a thermostat, like just around the house. And I was having the worst day of just like dizziness and disorientation, that lightheaded, depersonalized feeling. And I remember thinking like, all I want to do is just lay on the sofa right now. I don't want to replace the stupid thermostat or whatever the hell I was working on. Mm -hmm. But it was just like, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. And I just had to go a little slower than I normally would have. Maybe I had to read the directions instead of not reading okay. directions because I never read the directions. But so I had to go a little bit slower and be a little bit more deliberately deliberate in my actions. But I'm not going to say that the dizziness went away because I was changing the mm -hmm. thermostat, but it didn't st I, I changed the thermostat. I put the tools away. I did what I had to do. I, I answered some emails. I just kept going. 
yeah, and, yeah. and it didn't turn into because when I for me if I paid a lot of mind and I start all right I'm not gonna I'm not feeling well today I better just lay in bed or just stay at home that's when I can start to go on the downslide so yeah, yeah. Mm. you know whatever that symptom is just keep going it doesn't just ignore it the best you can and and it's yeah, for yeah. at least this one person for Cody it sounds like you you might be able to do that you're you're a little further ahead of the game so that's good yeah yeah yeah. Mm. I just so, realized I've got to take my dad to hospital on Friday. So that's my task. All right. Well, that's something. That's something. But I can already do that. You've been doing Which that. It's weird. It's weird. Like, that's 25 mile away. Yeah. Motorways and dual carriageways and big yeah. roads you and city center. It. How odd. And, like, I'm going to a hospital that's jam-packed with people yeah. and cars. Although I probably won't get out of the car. Maybe I will. I don't know. So that's... Like, why, why, why can I do that? Um, it's odd. Because you take take me out of that car seat and right. stick me on a bench, fifty yards away. Yeah, and it's a totally different ball game. Well, Maybe a, that's what I'll do. There's right. There's a lot of insight there. So you got to take your dad yeah, to the yeah. hospital on Friday. You mm. don't have a problem driving him there, and you're okay as long as you're sitting in the car. Like what? Mm. What makes the car any safer than the bench? Nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Nothing. So maybe that's the task. Maybe I'll be sitting on a bench. Get out, sit on a bench. Right, exactly. Oh, yeah. Wait for him mm. to come out. Or or give yourself a time frame. You can sit on the bench for 10 minutes, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good task. And then you'll be helping your dad at the same time, so it's not to love. Let's give it a go. All right. Well, instead of doing the, the hour marathon for 50 minutes, that's probably... We should probably that all? That's all. No, I've, got, I've got a point to make, haven't I, about uh, Louis Theroux. Yes, that was good. A docu- documentary that I watched the other day, and it, it was all about anorexia. Okay. And I was sitting there watching it with my wife and my daughter. And my, my missus has issues with food and that. So she was interested. My daughter was just interested. My daughter's scared of uh, thin people, which is really odd. I don't know. We all have our things. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But I was watching it and I was just sitting there thinking like this, the simplest solution to anorexia is just eat. And that's what probably, well, so many of the people that would have been watching that were just like, just freaking have a sandwich or something cured and then i was thinking like stick that in my mind agoraphobia just Mm. go outside social anxiety just go and sit in a crowded room and people just don't understand that as easy as it is and like i was sitting there thinking to myself just eat that would obviously help with your anorexia but when you're not in that position and when you don't understand what it feels like yes the simplest answer is the hardest freaking answer and it was just so weird that I was able to sit there and sort of relate that back to my own experience. But anorexia, the simple answer is just eat. Just eat. But that, that's the hardest freaking thing that somebody with anorexia can do. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a problem, would it? Right. I think that's what a lot of people actually think with, when it comes to mental health is like, just just eat. Just go outside. Just, right. just freaking, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop looking at yourself in the mirror. Stop being so down, you know? The simplest answer but it's just never the answer. Right? No, it's not. And but I think it really points out that thing that we've we even said early on and I've said before like it's the fear is real. So like yeah. for somebody who has, you know, that issue with food and they don't want to eat even though they're obviously too thin, it's Yeah, yeah. That's a real issue. They don't see themselves. When they look that person looks in the mirror, he or she does not see themselves as too thin. Mm. They see something different. So it's real to them. Just the same way as for the agoraphobic you know, walking out that door, mm. that the fear is every bit as real as somebody having a gun pointed directly at your nose. It's the same. The fear is exactly as it's real. crazy. Yeah, it's just crazy like the, how it translates across so many different disorders. And, yeah, yeah. But people that haven't experienced it have they, no idea what it's like. So it's it must be so difficult, like for them to understand. Yeah, like for our partners, wives, friends, and that. When I sat and watched that, and I'm myself, and I suffer with mental health, and yeah. I'm sitting there thinking, just eat, Yeah. then what must people that don't suffer with mental health issues think sure. about the way that we're feeling? And that's why, that- I mean, we've talked about this, and I'm sure we will again. Sometimes it bothers me when I hear that whole awareness thing. Like, we need awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, why? I mean, what you're... It's not, I mean, you know what? When the people who are important in your life, it would be good for them to at least have some understanding. So yeah. what I would, you know, and I say this all the time, like, you know, your wife, your girlfriend, whoever, they should try to understand that the fear that you're feeling is, is every bit as real as fear that they would fear jumping off yeah. a, a building, you know, 
they just don't understand why you feel the fear. But if they can understand that the fear is real, they may have a better understanding of, of your behavior, but we should be really careful about wanting to be accommodated. So awareness and understanding is great to want that, but only in so far as it makes the people in our lives understand what we're going through and prop us up as opposed yeah, to yeah. accommodate us. Like, it's okay, I won't, I, I won't I make awareness. Go. Awareness yeah. is pointless, in my opinion. I, I tend to That's agree. Like, right. awareness isn't it? Because awareness by itself is just saying, please accommodate me. And, and in, I, in our situation, the things that we talk about, I do not believe that they need to be accommodated. I just don't. And, yeah, and, yeah. and if that puts you at odds with me in this situation, then you're probably not the audience for me, at least. I won't speak for Billy, but... You know, if you truly feel that this is your lot in life and it's never going to change and you want the world to accommodate the fact that you are afraid to go to the supermarket, well, they I wouldn't know. be watching. Right. I don't know what to what to say about that. I think I don't know whether I said it or whether I wrote it in a blog or I planned it for a video, but like the awareness thing, like raising awareness about broken legs, right. like nobody would ever do that. No. They don't want to know what type of fracture it is. No. So what the What's the point? Right. What's the point? It doesn't matter. And I think, again, awareness, if you're just asking for awareness, you're asking for accommodation to a certain extent. But, yeah, you yeah. know, and if we're asking for awareness of something that can't be cured, it's a true disease of some kind, which is another thing I'm tired of hearing about how this is a disease. It's it's mm. it's a cognitive malfunction. It is a disorder. I will give it that label, but mm -hmm. I'm not calling it a disease. I'm not calling it. You didn't have, this is not a disease. It's not an affliction. It's It's a learning malfunction. It's a cognitive mm -hmm. disorder. There may be some chemical aspect to it, but anyway, awareness is fine when you have something that's physiologically wrong with you that cannot be cured with known medical technology, and you do need some special accommodation. Then I'm all yeah, for awareness. Yeah. I'm all for yeah. that. But I'm, I'm not for awareness when it comes to anxiety and, and agoraphobia and that sort of stuff. I'm just not. I don't think it helps us. It hurts us. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Understand what I'm going through and cheer me on. Do that for me, please. Although I do ask to raise awareness on Twitter, but that's just to get more followers. <laughs> you're, you're honest to a fault, Mr. Cross. <laughs> <laughs> just eat. <laughs> just eat, damn it. <sighs> All right. 56 minutes. Let's wrap it up. Let's do it. All right. I don't know what we're going to talk about next episode because we never do. We kind of wait. Well, kind of wait hopefully this. I will have a report back on my trip to the hospital. Yes. So that will give something to go on. And hopefully other people have yes. shared shared their task and maybe yep. whether they've taken any steps towards getting there or not. You know, sure. it'll, be the, it'll be the seventh when this goes on. So the next video will be the 14th. Yeah. So hopefully by then. Yeah, we'll see. We should stuff. all That's be true. making progress. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I'll, I'll throw one more. I'm going to throw two more things out there. Uh, Callie specifically, I know Callie, I've said Callie a hundred times, but she cannot wait for the episode of antidepressants. And, and I keep getting that question. We're going to do that at some point. We might I had have a, to, Yeah, I had yeah. a comment on mine saying that they've never heard me mention medications. Yeah, I've been steering clear from it because of my bias, but it's our podcast, so I guess our bias is go we'll do it one. yeah we'll, no, no. we'll do it we'll have to do it uh, either we'll do one together or maybe i'll just do a couple on my own but we'll take a sleep in pill before right? we will we will talk about that at some point it is part of this discussion so I, i'm not ignoring it and the last thing i'm going to say i'm going to direct this at one person i'm not going to say her name a specific young lady in the uk who used to live with her son who i think is now off to college who was with us back in the old days with short black hair you know who i'm talking about yes if you're watching, get out and do something because I know that you think you can't, but I am always going to think that you can. So I'm not going to mention the name, but please, if you're watching, do do something, and we we're going to cheer you on. I know, hundred percent, right? I've tried to I've tried to reach out before. I know, I know. I, I I'm still going to root that person on no matter what. So hundred percent. If you're watching, you have a cheerleading section waiting for you. We're here. There you go. I'll bring the pom poms. That's not a good look for you. I'm just saying. Oh, you haven't seen it. <laughs> I haven't seen it. You're right. I haven't seen it. I haven't had the pleasure of seeing that. Follow me on Instagram. Oh, I have to wash my eyes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeez. dudes. Thanks for coming yeah, by. Man. I guess we're going to see you next week. Get out there and do something productive and share yes. it with us. We'll see you there. See you next time. Hey, what's up, guys? Drew here. In the five years that I've done the podcast, I've never had a sponsor. But now it's time for me to put in a little plug for the day job, the business that I own. And that business is managed WordPress hosting. So if you have a website and it runs WordPress and you'd like WordPress hosting that makes WordPress faster, more secure, and way easier than you ever imagined it would be, then check out Helix. 
you can find us online at imhelix.com. That's I-A-M-H-E-L-I-X.com. We took a long time to build Helix. I'm super proud of it. It works spectacularly. We take really good care of our customers, and I promise we would take really good care of you too. So if you're in the market for WordPress hosting that will blow your mind, check out Helix. I would appreciate the consideration. I thank you for coming by and listening, and I'll see you the next time.